it's over. It's over, y'all. It's over. I mean, you know, the Bible says, when you shall see all these things come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Um, the Lord has given us certain signs of the times for us to see that the end of all things is at hand. We want to welcome you to the Project Ladder Rain Television broadcast. This is your host, Dr. O, reminding you that this is the truth of the hour, filled with the Holy Ghost power, and it is too sweet to be sour. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, take over this broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to welcome you tonight. It's over, brothers and sisters. It is over. And when we say it's over, all we're saying is that the end of all things is at hand. Let's just get right into it. In the book, Revelation, the 13th chapter, the Bible outlines where we're headed. The Bible says in verse three, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Talking about this beast of papacy, Roman Catholicism, and his deadly wound was healed. When will it be healed? At the enforcement of the Sunday law, the mark of the beast. And all the world wandered after the beast. Brothers and sisters, um, this thing is here, brothers and sisters. This thing is here. And, um, of course, we know who's going to bring it on. It's going to be the second beast power of Revelation, the 13th chapter. And um, we're going to have to cover this this Sabbath. Uh, as you already know, the second beast power of the United States of America in Revelation 13, 11 through 17 will enforce the worship of the first beast, which will be the papacy through the observance of the false Sabbath, where Sunday will be by law enforced as the mark of the beast contrast to the seal of the living god which is the seven day sabbath brothers and sisters this is going to be a very pivotal turning point and through this ladato c uh document which is really the blueprint the papal blueprint for world domination um we're going to see a lot of stuff go down and the pope is calling for universal communion and as the spirit of prophecy says, the Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome and trampling upon the rights of conscience, which will put the papacy back in control. And they're talking about ecological conversion with Sunday as the commonly shared day of rest. Brothers and sisters, this, what we're about to show you is in fulfillment of great controversy where it says the Roman church is far reaching in her plans and modes of operation. She is employing every device to extend her influence and increase her power in preparation for a fierce and determined conflict to regain control of the world, to reestablish persecution and to undo all that Protestantism has done. And this climate change issue, brothers and sisters, is outlined in Great Controversy 589. Even though she did not use the words climate change, you can read it and see that these are climate related calamities which Satan has induced, which he has caused these men to think that this is the result of global warming. They are marshalling their forces, brothers and sisters, to find some solution to this. And um, what I'm about to show you is just proof that this world is getting ready to end. And brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. It's time for us to get it right with the Lord. Oh, I tell you, wait, wait till wait till we show you what's coming down the pipeline. This Ladato C document. Um, in this Laudato Si document, the Pope says to manage the global economy, to revive economies hit by the crisis, talking about the economic, the e environmental crisis, to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and the greater imbalances that would result, to bring about integral and timely disarmament, food security, and peace, to guarantee the protection of the environment, and to regulate migration. For all of this, there is an urgent need of a true world political authority. And as we know, the Bible says that the world powers will, and the churches will have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast. 
And what we're going to see, we're going to see the Bible says she will sit on many waters, meaning she will regain control of the world only for a short time. And then Jesus will come back. Brothers and sisters, as you see here, the whole world will be converted and in harmony with the Sunday law, which will start in the United States first. And of course, as the spirit of prophecy says, every nation on this earth will follow the example of the United States. Oh, man, the final movements will be rapid ones and it's over, y'all. And we're going to just get right into it as we get into breaking news. <laughs> This is from Breebart News. This came out today. It says Pope Francis calls on humanity to repent for abuse of Mother Earth. Pope Francis calls on humanity to repent for the abuse of Mother Earth. And in this, he says, quote, we humans must repent. And this is this is what he says here and modify our lifestyles because of our abuse of Mother Earth. Pope Francis states in a message released Thursday. This came out today. He's calling for humanity to repent. But understand this right here. It's at the same time, he's calling for humanity to unite together in solidarity. So all this is connected together. And make a long story short, um, it says here, um, the Pope goes all in, calls for, notice this right here, green economics, green spirituality, and green education man this is so deep oh i tell you this is so deep man and notice this and for those that may uh, question whether or not this has anything to do with climate change it says because of the climate crisis the poor disproportionately suffer from the impact of drought which ellen white said famine and great controversy flooding hurricanes she said tidal waves heat waves the great conflagrations that are becoming more and more intense and frequent. Wow, man, isn't that what Sister White said in Great Controversy? This is exactly what the servant of the Lord said in the Great Controversy, page 589. And we're going to just read this to you again. Um, the Lord um, knows how to confirm his word. And listen to this right here. In accidents and calamities by sea and by land and great conflagrations dealing with the fires and heat, terrific fierce tornadoes, and terrific hailstorms, and tempests, floods, cyclones, which are uh, hurricanes, tidal waves, and earthquakes in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follows. Then it says, he imparts to the air a deadly taint, and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. That's what Sister White said in Great Controversy 589. And then we know what she just said in um, the next page where it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. It says more intense and frequent, the Pope asserts. So what you're seeing right here is practically what the spirit of prophecy said they would say. It says it in the first place, it is our sister, Mother Earth, who cries out, pray to our consumerist excesses, excesses, she weeps and implores us to put an end to our abuses and to her destruction. So, I mean, the Pope is really calling for humanity to not just repent, but humanity to come together. I don't know about you, but this is truly prophetic. And this came out um, today on the Vatican website. This is the reason why we're telling you that this is here it's here y'all it is here it is here brothers and sisters look what it says right here um this is from uh july tw the 21st came out today brothers and sisters listen to the voice of creation is the theme and invitation of this year's season of creation the ecumenical phase begins on september 1st with the world day of prayer and the care of creation and concludes on october the 4th with the feast of saint francis it is a special time for all Christians to pray and listen to this and work together to care for our common home, especially originally inspired by the ecumenical patriarchate of Constantinople. This season is an opportunity to cultivate our ecological conversion. Do you hear that? 
a conversion encouraged by John Paul II as a response to the ecological catastrophe predicted by St. Paul VI back in 1970. Ecological conversion. We've been telling you that ecological conversion is tied into Sunday worship, brothers and sisters. Um, this is deep. And it talks about in practice of ecological spirituality. And they quote Laudato Si. And this is a very interesting document that we need to really um, take a look at. And um, I'm going to um, save this for this coming Sabbath with Stephen Bohr. But what happens is this right here, man. I mean, when you see articles like this, the Pope called, this is Revelation 13 and Revelation 17 in fulfillment. The Pope's calling for everybody to unite. And then uh, if, if it, it didn't get worse, look at this right here. Now, I want to just share with you uh, what God has told us in the great controversy. And we're seeing it play out. And so, you know, during the loud cry, um, the Bible says Babylon has fallen, has fallen. And in this, the spirit of prophecy talks about what's going to happen. And we're going to read to you in Great Controversy. It says, quote, in Great Controversy 606, it says, Men of faith and prayer will be constrained by hope to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. The fearful results of enforcing the observances of the church by civil authority, dealing with the Sunday law, the inroads of spiritualism, but notice this, the steffly but rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked. So, you know, we know that it's going to be apostate Protestantism that pushes it. But also remember that what will also be revealed is not only the inroads of spiritualism, the observances of the church by civil authority dealing with the Sunday law. But notice this, the steffly but rapid progress of the papal power to where they're pushing for world domination, brothers and sisters. She said all will be unmasked. And they talk about ecological conversion, which deals with Sunday as the commonly shared day of rest. Brothers and sisters, this is real. God is letting us know that we are on the right track exposing this thing and to let you know it's time for us to get the third angel's messages out to the world before it is everlastingly too late. Brothers and sisters, as it is as it has been said, this Sunday movement is making its way in darkness. And we're going to show you some other things right now to let you know that we are truly in the end time. We must be in the end of time. And it's only if God allows it, only if God allows it, is this going to happen. Now, what's happening is, is that, um, as you already know, that the United States of America um, has a Catholic president, okay? And his name is Joe Biden, okay? Um, you must understand that to have a Catholic president is very, very controversial from a prophetic standpoint. Why? Because of what we read in the Great Controversy. Ellen White says in the Great Controversy that the Roman Catholic Church, with all its ramifications throughout the world, forms one vast organization under the control and designed to serve the interests of the papal see. Its millions of communicants in every country on the globe are instructed to hold themselves as bound in allegiance to the Pope. Whatever their nationality or their government, they are to regard the authority of the church as above all other. Though they may take the oath pledging their loyalty to the state, yet back of this lies the vow of obedience to Rome Exalting them from every pledge inimical to their interests. Now, so as we've talked about this before in other programs, now that you have a, uh, a a Catholic president, it makes it a lot easier, brothers and sisters, for the Roman Catholic Church to have its way. And I've said stuff before where I've been ridiculed for it. But brothers and sisters, look at this right here. This is from Bree Bart. It says that the Vatican has a very positive relationship with the Biden administration, top official says. Look at that. I mean, you know, I mean, that's his, that's that, I mean, that's his boss, the Pope. And you see it right there. The Vatican has a very positive relationship with Biden administration. But look at this. The Jesuit Review says the Vatican has a, has a very positive 
relationship. Mm -mm -mm. And it says here, in the final part of his exclusive interview with America, Archbishop Paul Gallagher, the Vatican Secretary for Relations with State, speaks about the positive relationship between the Vatican and the Biden administration and the significance of the Holy See's adherence to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Wow. And so um, he concludes by expressing his hopes of how the situation in the world will develop in the coming two or three years. Wow. They put a time frame on it. And it says here, quote, it says here, I would say that our exchanges with the Biden administration are frequent. What? Particularly through the U.S. Embassy to the Holy See. They come and tell us things that they are working on and obviously take note of those things. And we make our comments on them. Sometimes we don't always respond in the way that they would wish. But there's a very positive relationship in the sense that I don't think we have any hesitation to approach them whether it's the embassy or the State Department or the White House. And they don't have any hesitation to do the same here, which I think is very positive because that's not always the case in bilateral relations. Then it says, so compared with the previous administration, talking about the Trump administration, it's easier now. You hear that? Well, we know why, because the man's a Catholic. That's why. And, um, mm, 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 man. And so this is very deep, man. So talk about it's very easy now. It's very easy. And um, as you see right here, frankly speaking, I think we found that we didn't quite see eye to eye with this previous administration as we do with this one. Wow. I mean, do you see this right here? Now, the whole it says the Holy See recently acceded to the U.N. Climate Convention and the Paris Agreement. Can you explain the significance of that? It says we're talking about the U.N. Framework Convention on Climate Change which is a fundamental juridical instrument inspiring what the international community has been doing to cl combat climate change and its Paris Agreement adopted in 2015. The Holy See, in order to be able to adhere to this, notice this right here, the Holy See, in order to be able to adhere to the, this convention and to the agreement has had to make an enormous effort. It has been achieved only by the goodwill of the various departments of the Holy See and the Vatican City working to make it possible. That really needs recognition. So for the Vatican City State in particular, this is a very important moment. Understand this. The spirit of prophecy says she is employing every device to extend her influence and increase her power. So them getting involved in the climate change movement to stop the calamities which they call climate change, which the spirit of prophecy just outlines as the working of Satan's power. Understand this, the Vatican joining this is part of this prophecy. Brothers and sisters, you would have to be blind not to see it. It says, quote, what it means on the wider scene is that the Holy See, talking about the papacy, the Pope, was the last state, the last state to agree to the Convention on Climate. And therefore, this convention is now, notice this, a universal convention because really everyone is on board. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Did you see that? The papacy is on board now. Obviously the challenges are immense, but it does mean it does mean that there is the prospect when in September our adherence to the Paris Agreement becomes effective that we can participate in the 27th climate change conference in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt. Wow. As a state party to both the convention and an agreement that will enable, listen to this, us to make a bigger contribution. Wow. And it means that the position of the Holy See, which is expressed above all in Laudato Si, will be much more coherent. It's over, y'all. It's over. With the adherence to the convention, we're putting our money where our mouth is. It's, oh, that's, it's over, y'all. It's over. It is over. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, this is very deep, y'all. I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, <sighs> I'm just completely speechless. Usually you see me all excited, but I'm really sitting back here taking this in and 
Oh, man, this is deep, y'all. This is deep. The Lord's coming back. The, the Lord has revealed this to us. This is this is a sign of the times, brothers and sisters. And um, we, we, we're only making them available in 500 and 1,000. So we sell it by 900. So you're going to have to go on the internet site and get it. 666, what is the mark? If you want to get it, just talk to a viewer. Uh, it's over, y'all. It is over. This is it, brothers and sisters. And so, um, hmm. I mean, they are truly uh, stretching their hands across all over the America and all over the world, man. So um, I believe, brothers and sisters, that we're about to see a lot of things happen. So when you see this article where it says that the Vatican has a very positive relationship with the Biden administration, understand that is prophetic, brothers and sisters. They say the very same thing in Breebart, just to let you know that um, it says the Vatican's foreign minister said that the Holy See has a much better relationship with the Biden administration than it did with the previous administration. Speaking with the Jesuit run, they, 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 they tell you what this is. Jesuit run America magazine. Archbishop Gallagher says that our exchanges with the Biden administration are frequent, are frequent brothers and sisters. This is dangerous, y'all. This is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous from a prophetic standpoint, man. And all we could tell you is this right here, man. We need to really be praying because um, this is all what it is. But look what it says right here. It says this means that the Vatican part can't participate in the 20 COP 26, 27, excuse me. So this is very deep, man. And um, everybody's on board. Everybody's on board now. And so um, we need to be praying, man. Mm mm mm. In his words, Gallagher also urged greater support for the United Nations in the line of Pope Francis' well-known advocacy for multilateralism. But this is the same Pope that a couple of weeks ago said that the UN has no power. And brothers and sisters, now that the Vatican is involved, brothers and sisters, I believe that they're going to give their power and their strength unto the beast power. Brothers and sisters, this is truly um, prophetic. At the same time, when from earthbeat.com, um, it's telling not earthbeat.com, this came out today with the planet at a breaking point. The papacy urges decisive action at UN environment summits. Let me just say this to you the Pope is calling for this. And um, now that they're part of this movement now and this season of creation, understand, remember what the spirit of prophecy says. She is employing every device. So, brothers and sisters, it's no surprise that they're jumping on this climate issue and pumping it up and stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, I mean, things are happening. But what happens is this in the environment. But man, let me tell you this right here. And they're talking about ecological conversion, brothers and sisters. And the Pope says that things, look what it says here in this article, as dangerous heat waves and wildfires blistered the globe this summer pope francis has called for bolder actions from nations at two major international environment summits some is later this year and for all people talking about everybody to repent and modify our lifestyles and one of those lifestyle issues is going to be on the sabbath y'all and destructive systems in a collective effort to rein in climate change and save ecosystems and people on a planet that he says is reaching a breaking point in his message for the upcoming month-long season of creation the Pope proposed that an ecological conversion must occur. Notice this. Not only among individuals, but within the community of nations. Wow. And telling you, ecological conversion. See, he's just throwing it out there. But we have the evidence to show what ecological conversion entails. The heart of ecological conversion deals with let me just read this to you the times of malta explains it right here it says ecological conversion also means dealing with time differently both as an individual and as a society we need to rediscover the rhythm of time the alternation between work and rest with sunday as the commonly shared day of rest so this ecological conversion calls for the worldwide observance of the sabbath and brothers and sisters, once apostate Protestantism starts pushing for the Sunday law to be legislated, the papacy has already groomed themselves 
and has even put this pitch out worldwide and it's going to make it so easy for everybody to do it. Sister White says this thing will be unveiled as the scroll unrolls. And so this is um, prophetic, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you this right here. The papacy is on top of this climate agreement, man. And what's going to happen between now and the end of this year? Only the Lord knows. And listen to this right here. Uh, this is from, and it says, these three positions form the pillars of the proposed fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty which holds great promise to complement and enhance the Paris Agreement. So what is it? You don't have to go no further. All you got to do is go to their website. This is a treaty, a global initiative that's worldwide to phase out fuels and support a just transition by endorsing the call for a fossil fuel treaty today. Wow. I wonder what it's about. Mm, London. 230 legislators call for fossil fuel. Look at this. What is this treaty? Look at this. Brothers and sisters, I believe it says Friday for Future Act. Hold on. Friday for Future Activists call for a new global treaty. Mm. What's this all about? Brothers and sisters, it's only going to be a matter of time where this is all going to fit within the Sunday law crisis. But look what it says. The Vatican calls for a fossil fuel. So hold on. Look at this. The Vatican calls for a fossil fuel treaty to protect the people and the planet. Do you see this right here? What is this treaty? Let me see, climate, oh man, this is deep, brothers and sisters. And The generation that grew up with nuclear weapons were told to hide under their desks in case of attack. This generation faces an even greater threat, the climate crisis. And again, they have nowhere to hide. While citizens, cities, and countries are working to reduce their emissions, behind our backs, the coal, oil, and gas industry continues to rapidly expand fossil fuels, driving catastrophic warming. Surviving the climate crisis requires a bold new idea. Introducing the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty. Why a treaty? 50 years ago, the world signed a non-proliferation treaty to avoid nuclear war. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol protected the ozone. The Paris Agreement begins to limit emissions, but doesn't mention coal, oil or gas. We need a global plan to end the proliferation of fossil fuels. A global plan. There it is right there, y'all. Look at that. We need a global plan. You know what that plan is going to be? It's going to be a national and universal Sunday law. Brothers and sisters, I am a convinced man. Look at that. We need a global plan. And that global plan going to be headed by the Pope. God has already told us this. I mean, don't you see that prophet? Don't you see this thing come in the past, brothers and sisters? Remember, a spirit of prophecy says all in regard to this matter is not yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. The scroll is unrolling right now. And spiritual things are truly spiritually discerned. Oh, man, this is so deep. They need a global plan. Let's continue on a global plan. And fast track solutions. A fossil fuel treaty would phase out coal, oil and gas faster, more fairly and forever while supporting workers, communities and countries dependent on fossil fuels. People around the world are already winning frontline battles against coal, oil and gas projects. A treaty can bring together these diverse efforts into a powerful and equitable global plan. Endorse the fossil fuel treaty and together we can drive a just transition to clean energy and a safe climate for generations to come fossil fuel treaty they said they want to need a global plan a global plan mm, mm, mm. and you saw that the vatican is already i'm um, talking about this i like to see what this treaty is all about but this is uh, all the people here who are on board with this um the fossil treaty champions and you know um, i'm not joining this but you know and look at this right here Archbishop of Canterbury, you know, the religious powers are involved. I'm just, these are all the different people that are involved. You already told the Vatican is in it. So, you know, the Pope is in this right here, brothers and sisters. You know, it's, it's funny how, 
how people are coming together who may not necessarily be religious on this situation, brothers and sisters. And it's very, it's very uh, uh, um, uh, uh, interesting. So it talks about the faith leaders for a treaty. Look at this right here. Faith leaders can make the moral case for a global drug transition. Oh, wow. You see, you're talking about, so you see how this is, this is why we can't get involved with the ecumenical movement. It says as leaders, listen to this, across different diverse religious and spiritual communities around the globe, we call on governments to develop and implement a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Mm, mm, mm. So it, they talk about the same things here. The science surrounding the most urgent danger facing humanity is undeniable. To be good caretakers of our common home, we must act and phase out the production of fossil fuels. Wow. And you know that the gut, the Catholic Church is all up in this. And so we hail for many faiths and beliefs, but together we can remedy the decades of negligence. Wow. To safeguard our coexistence with this earth. Just as our beliefs are entrenched in religious and spiritual teachings, our res response to the climate crisis must be deeply rooted in science and equity to heal the planet. And people are like, wow, this is deep, man. I mean, this is prophetic, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, I mean, I just want to know what this treaty is. So, um, oh, man, I mean, tell me, what you th what do you think about this? Talk to me, saints of God. What do you think about this? I mean, now you can see how the whole world can come together over a... Uh, 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 a just cause or what they call a just cause man it's over brothers and sisters and I'm telling you the Lord is getting ready to come these are a sign of the times and I am convinced that this what you see in before us is one of the things not all not the only way but one of the things that Satan will use in order to get the whole world to come together brothers and sisters I want to know what this treaty is. I'm trying to find it right now. And you can endorse it as an individual. You can endorse it as an organization. All this kind of things, man. Satan is working, man, in so many ways. And this is subtle, brothers and sisters. This is subtle. This is so subtle. And uh, this is why we're going to have to. And corporations can do it. You can corporations can do it, man. So... Um, I tell you, oh, the Lord is just really showing us what's coming down the pipeline. Talking about the treaty and stuff like that. What is this treaty? I want to find out what it is. I want to see what this treaty is all about. So, um, but whatever it is, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. Um, I'm just going to have to just do some research on this because I just found it as we did this program. But what happens is this. It says here in this thing with the Pope, advocates of the treaty estimate that coal and oil and gas are 86 responsible for 86 of the carbon emissions in the last decade. And um, it says in his message, Pope Francis called the 1.5 Paris goal quite demanding and said that meeting it requires countries to work together to reach. See, and this is when Sunday worship is going to come in. This is going to make the Sunday law very easy to be enforced worldwide. It says as quickly as possible, including a more ambitious climate plans at COP27. Man, if the Vatican is can participate in it now, you know they're going to want to controlling the whole thing. It is expected. Notice this. It is expected that the Vatican will look to play, listen to this, a larger role. Man, this thing is here, man. This is it. This scroll is unrolling. It, the scroll is unrolling, brothers and sisters. Wow, man. Mm, mm, mm. It says solutions to climate change from changing modes of consumption and production as well as lifestyles presents, notice this, a need for a covenant. <laughs> wow. Between human beings and the planet. Wow. I'm telling you, Sunday worship. I'm telling you, global Sabbath, environmental Sabbath, religious Sabbath, whatever people want to call it. Continue, he continued and repeated a call for extra active industries to end practices that destroy ecosystems. That's where the labor unions are going to come in and we got the all rest on Sunday. I'm telling you, this thing is real, brothers and sisters. I mean, we got so much to talk about. I don't have time to even get into all this right here. This thing is coming to an end. 
And my wife just walked in here and I'm just like, man, thank God we got to the country, honey. Amen. Yes. Thank God we got to the country, man. Gotta and get your provisions going. Though. You got to get your provisions going. So, you know, um, whether we want to believe this or not, these um, climate related catastrophes or calamities are being trumped upon as being responsible for human behavior. I'm looking at this right here. Man, the world's coming to an end, honey. Jesus is coming. Jesus is the coming. Writing the, the writing is on the wall. Look at this. Papal proposals for climate biodiversity. Francis reiterated that the responsibility to the care for creation is an essential part oh, of living. He's wow. Talking about the planet. Yeah. And that's why Sunday worship is going to make sense. It's going to make sense. That's right. Say that one more that's, time. That's hold on. Hold on. Come here. Come, come, come here. Come. That's why Sunday worship is going to make sense. Just like that lady said in that video yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's going to make so much sense. I mean, she was repeating the no buy, no sell thing while she was reading Sister White. Exactly. <sighs> he said that the care of creation is an essential part of living a virtuous life for Christians and that all people of faith have a responsibility not only to engage in a personal ecological conversion, but also work and act in a spirit of maximum cooperation, especially among countries and at least two UN conferences in the next coming months the next international climate change conference is top cop 26 wow the next one after that will be in december it says the global community will gather in december in montreal man it's over y'all mm -mm -mm. in recent week catholic in recent weeks catholic groups around the world have expressed concern around both gatherings Wow, man, this is over, man. Listen to this right here. Look, remember Ellen White said great conflagrations. Fire burns during the heat wave, man. Francis said that his recent move to authorize the Holy See to formally join the Ferris Agreement was in the hope that the humanity of the 21st century will be remembered for having generously shouldered his grave responsibilities. It's over, y'all. This is it. This is it. This is it. If this is not it, I don't know what is it. This is it. Look at this right here. This is so deep. Oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. The Pope outlined for COP15, which will be this year, four principles for the meeting, beginning with forming a clear ethical basis for the measure to preserve. But see, that's dealing with religion and stuff like that, man. Don't be surprised. Let me just say this to you and without time setting because we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen. But with all this in place and all what they're trying to do, do not be surprised if somewhere, somehow, some legislator in the United States will put a Sunday bill on the table and it comes in with it comes in with a religious package and it correlates with this environmental thing. Don't be surprised if it happens. I didn't say when. Oh, this is so deep. Man, it's over, y'all. Man, look at this. Wow. COP15 is happening. When is COP15 happening? COP15 is happening this year in December. And look what's being proposed. Listen to this right here. Mm, it's over, y'all. This thing is deep. So the first thing was a clear ethical basis. But look what it says. He added that a global pact on biodiversity could reverse its decline, support conservation and cooperation, and promote meeting the needs of people in sustainable ways. Now, watch this right here. Francis also encouraged a potential agreement to promote global solidarity. Look at that right there. Man, it's over, man. He's talking about everybody coming together, brothers and sisters. He's talking about everybody coming together, man. This is Deep. This is, I'm telling you, this is a subtle way, but listen to this right here. During this season of creation, let us pray that COP27 and COP15 can serve to unite the human family. Wow. The Bible says they will have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast. I'm here to let you know this thing is real. It's it's over, y'all. It is over. This is it. I don't, I don't care what nobody say. This is it. Brothers and sisters, the papacy is using Remember, the spirit of prophecy says using every device to extend her influence and her, increase her power. And this is seeing it being fulfilled right now. 
And look what it says about this. Pope Francis defending defends participation in Paris Climate Agreement says that Mother Earth is on the breaking point. Mm -mm -mm. So, man, he's an old man. So he don't whatever he got to do, he got to do it now. Do you understand this? But papacy has to push this ball as far as possible. They're talking about ecological conversion, brothers and sisters. We've already showed you is talking about brothers and sisters the need to keep sunday it's over brothers and sisters i'm telling you and uh, mm, mm, mm. man don't be surprised brothers and sisters and look what it says right here wow in its response to life site a single human person is worth more metaphysically than the entire planet of inanimate and sub-rational beings because he or she bears a specific likeness to God, etc., etc. The conversion that is necessary in our time is a true... Oh, it's over. The conversion that is necessary in our time, he added, is turning to the one true God. Wow, it's over. Now, what did Ellen G. White say in Great Controversy? That there will be a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering in of the long expected millennium. It's over, y'all. And the Lord heaven and earth and to heed his voice. Man, what am I supposed to what am I supposed to believe when you see this? I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be very hard. Um, it's just gonna be very hard to look at this right here and just say, oh, this don't have anything to do with Bible prophecy. Brothers and sisters, it does. It does, man. And we're going to cover all this with Stephen Board this week. Man, I can't even wait for next week because it's over, y'all. And look what's going on in L.A. This is from Channel. Look at this right here. Water police. What have what's called a water police because in Los Angeles because of the, um, the laws they have there to where you can only use water a certain times a week. In Los Angeles now it says here he's part of the city department water and power team which looks into hundreds of community complaints filed by neighbors each week about water waste now watch this right here man so what happens is this scientists say that global warming driven by human activity including the unchecked burning of fossil fuels is creating a great number of extreme events okay and it says, with reservoirs and rivers at historic lows, Los Angeles authorities have brought in water restrictions, such as limiting the water lawn irrigation to as little as eight minutes twice a week. Wow. And, he, and what happens is this right here. Um, this person notes down the addresses of properties where he finds evidence of infringement. And so what happens is, is that you got people... Um, after the fifth infraction, a device is installed, which physically restricts a household supply. Wow. Even though they say it's not necessary. But brothers and sisters, I mean, you have what's called the war in this. It calls it the water police. Brother, it's over. It's over. Man, look at that. We're not looking really for their money. That doesn't get us more water. We're trying to get behavioral change. Well, it starts with a warning citation, and then after that, uh, in phase three of the ordinance, it starts at $200, the next uh, violation is $400, and then the one after that is $600, all the way up to the next one being, uh, we can restrict our water flow if they're not in compliance. Wow. We are in the most restrictive phase we've ever been. Uh, previous to that, we were in phase two of the water conservation ordinance so, uh, since 2009. So we've been doing uh, conservation here in Los Angeles for a, for a very long time. The reality is that these kinds of gardens would be fine on that amount of water. In fact, could do with less, but our traditional lawns can't survive on that. So people are really looking for what is possible. Unfortunately, folks are looking at gravel, you know, so they're taking out their landscape completely. Uh, they're looking at artificial turf, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do. A 
lot of times they don't know about the the ordinance, um, and that's our job to educate them. It's over, y'all. That you know what that means. That means that everybody that lives in the city of Los Angeles, that's a seven day Adventist that believes in the spirit of prophecy. It is time to get out of Los Angeles. It is time. You can't water your lawn but two days a week for eight minutes. And people, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this, are reporting people for doing this. Man, if they can have a water police then they can have, as Save the Serve said today, they can have a Sunday police. Brothers, it's over. It's oh, it's over, y'all. And I'm telling you, man, this thing is time to get up out of the cities. Is Stephen Bohr speaking Friday night? Absolutely. Yes, he is. Man, it's over, y'all. I keep saying it's over, but, oh, man. It, you know, where you live in a situation where your water can get shut off because you don't, I mean, people need, I mean, you know, your grass needs more than just eight minutes of water per day. But we do understand that there's a drought over there. Man, if they could do that, brothers and sisters, they could pass a Sunday law. It's over, y'all. And I don't know what to tell you, man. The Lord is revealing all this stuff for us. And guess what I found? I found this treaty. I found the treaty. I mean, we got too much. I mean, we could do, man, you know what? I'm just, we're going to have to do a we could, uh, Sunday Law Update. We're going to have to start doing two, three, four hour longs. But Sunday Law Updates. Look at this right here. Mm -mm -mm. The Cl Paris Climate Agreement. Wow. Man, cold, climate code red for humanity. The main cause of climate change. Man, they want this. This is a treaty that they want. And what's the definition of a treaty? All right, what's the definition of a treaty? A treaty is a formally concluded and ratified agreement between countries. Wow. Similar terms, agreement, settlement, pact, deal, concordant, accord. Wow. Protocol, compact, convention, contract, covenant. Have mercy. Look at this one. Alliance. Brothers and sisters, this is real. Wow, man. This is, oh, man. And so they're talking about um, accelerate a just transition. Uh, and notice the world must work together, building blocks for international cooperation. Wow. I mean, brothers and sisters, it's coming. I'm this. I mean, this is remember, Ellen White says it all in regard to this matter is not yet understood and will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. So this is a global treaty, brothers and sisters. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. And then, of course, you already told that the Vatican was already a part of this, brothers and sisters. Look at this treaty, man. I'm telling you, man, this thing is real. God told us this was going to happen, and it's happening right before our very eyes. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. This is deep. Man, this is deep. I mean, tell me, what do you feel about what do you feel about this? You saw the Vatican's on board. Wow, there it is. It's over. Oh, it's... Look at this. Washington Post. Vatican Cardinal backs fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Wow, eleven hours ago. Wow, Pope Francis. <laughs> it's over, y'all. It's over. Jesus is coming. Do you see this? Oh, man, this is deep. Look at this. Pope Francis, the Vatican calls for international cooperation for the environment. Oh, man. Did not, did not tell you. Did not tell you. This is oh. It's over. It's over. It's, I, I don't know. Oh, man. Didn't God, didn't God tell us this was going to happen? Man, that's why things are continually unfolding. Wow. The Lord's coming back. He's coming back. This is all, it's all about the wrap up. The Vat it says it right here. The Vatican calls for international cooperation for the environment. It's over, y'all. It is over. I'm done. I'm done. 
I'm not done, but I am done because this is I mean, how many more articles do I have to see? I don't, I'm not I don't need I don't need to be convinced. I'm already convinced. Let's go back to this website. Look at this right here. This non-proliferation treaty. The VAT, okay, it says here, notice this right here. Look at this. And who's and guess who's part of it? The Vatican, brothers and sisters. This is deep. Whenever the Vatican's involved in this, you always gotta remember. Look at this right here. The Vatican. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The Vatican calls for look at that. Look at that. The Vatican calls for it. And it's right there. The Vatican. This came out today. Mercy. It's over, y'all. Oh man, look at this. The Vatican calls for a fall. This is over. This is, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. The Vatican calls for a fossil fuel non-politeration treaty to protect people on the planet. Look at that. There it is right there in your face. It's right there in your face. I don't know, but I don't know. And it, it, it's really, it, you know, remember the spirit of prophecy says that they are extending their, they are using every device to extend her power. It's over, y'all. I, I tell you, this is it, man. This is it. All we waiting for is apostate Protestantism to stop pushing it. And with the things that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks, don't be surprised. All of it take if 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 you talk about you're seeing Christians talking about the need to control the state. Don't be surprised. All it takes is a senator or a governor or somebody to just put before Congress a bill for something to be a national day of rest and worship. And they'll probably say for the environment as well, too, brothers and sisters. Remember, LMI says, let me just read it to you from the spirit of prophecy. However you want to interpret it, um, you can interpret it however you want. But um, this tells me something very, very deep. The Lord's coming back. I am convinced that this is the train. Just don't know when. Ellen White says the light that we have upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. All in regard to this matter is not yet understood and it will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. So what does that say? It says to live long enough. Do you understand this? And we'll start seeing it happen. I don't know y'all, but I am convinced that this is it. And that we are seeing the beginning of the end. We can't put a date on it because we don't know exactly when this is going to happen. But just know if we hang on to Jesus, we're going to be with Jesus in heaven, brothers and sisters. This is a sign that the Lord is soon to come and to take us home and we can get out of this earth and we can live happily ever after with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'm looking forward to this day. I don't know about you, but I had to come on. This world coming to an end. I, it is here. It is here, y'all. When you see them talking about joining these movements and these groups, brothers and sisters, you, it is, you cannot take anything off the prophetic table. Brothers and sisters, we know the whole world is going to join together with the beast power. And it's not going to be just religious. It's going to be also on this issue of the climate. Brothers and sisters, the spirit of prophecy says it. She did not use the word climate change, but nevertheless, you see it all in there. What they are calling climate change with these calamities. Oh, it's over, brothers and sisters. I'm done. This is it, man. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm done. And um, mm -mm -mm. it's just a matter of time before you start hearing this thing about the Sabbath, man. And I'm telling you. The Lord is soon to come. That's right. It is time to look up for our redemption draw off night. That's right. Amen. Man, it's over, y'all. So let us give our hearts to Jesus. Let's get the third angel's message out. And this is the reason why we are making available the Mark of the Beast tracks. You need to order your Mark of the Beast tracks immediately. Brothers and sisters, Please go to the website 666whatisthemark.com. 666whatisthemark.com. Go to the website 666whatisthemark.com and to get order your tracks. Brothers and sisters, is this is man, it's time. It's time to get it out. And brothers and sisters, we just we just mailed out in the last two days 
and I got an order right now, almost 10,000 of these tracks going out to people, brothers and sisters. And we need you to um, support us. Um, and it's going, it was time, it's time. We're going home. The Lord is on over this earth. We can kiss this earth goodbye, man. It's over, y'all. But it's not over with Jesus. It's only the beginning. He which has begun a good work in you will perform it into the day of Christ. We'll talk more about this on another program. Have a good night's sleep. We're going to see you tomorrow. Always remember that you can never lose with the name that we choose. And his name is Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. And that this is the truth of the hour filled with the Holy Ghost power. And it is too sweet to be sour. This is the Project Ladder Rain television broadcast. Wishing you God's blessings. And until next time, may God truly and richly bless you.